Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, ECIM family. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. Listen, give us time to share this broadcast. We're going to give you guys enough time to share this broadcast as, as well. Listen, we thank you guys for tuning in with us this morning. You know it's your boy, Minister Roger Ringo Jr. I have my co-host with me this morning. Giovanna. Listen, we are excited. We are excited. We are excited about just having a, being here another day. Listen, That's we right. are glad to enter into the house of the Lord with Thanksgiving. We're so glad just to be back with you guys again. So if you can, just give us 10 seconds as we share it, and we're going to be back with you guys very, very soon. Amen. I'm going to share it now. I just shared it. It just, just went on my timeline. Also. Listen, so we need you guys. Please share this broadcast this morning. Please, please, please share this broadcast. Please do that for us. Also, tag and also comment this morning. Amen. Listen, Amen. we want to let's talk to our first time viewers that's watching this morning. Amen. All right. If you're a first time viewer, will you please drop down below in the comments that this is your first time watching with us? Let us know what city that you're watching from so we can have somebody reach out to you. Uh, we have several different platforms that you can connect with us. Amen. We have um, Instagram at ECIM Family, our Facebook page, which is right here. First time viewers share so somebody else can see it and it can also be their first time. Amen. We also have our YouTube page at Frank Bussy and we have our awesome, awesome Empowerment Church app. That's on Apple Store, Google Play, Roku, and Amazon. Amen. Amen. Listen, by, like I said, the reason why we tell you guys to share it because we, we're branded into different states and different countries. So we need you. We need your, your help. We've already been going to Texas. We've been going to Arizona. They was on this to past Atlanta. Thursday. Atlanta, Thomasville, Broxton, Osceola, Willacoochee, Georgia. We thank you guys for listening. But that just comes by somebody sharing the word of God. We might That's not right. be there physically in Arizona, but guess what? When somebody shares it, it travels. The word of God travels all the way to Arizona. They're Texas. virtually and spiritually. Amen. So listen, we want you guys to please tag, please tag. Please also comment, comment your friends, your family. We want to tag everybody because this word may be tailor-made just for you just this for morning. You. It may be just tailor-made for you this morning. We do not want you to miss out on a tailor-made word that our pastor, Pastor Frank C. Bussy, has for you this morning. Amen. Amen. Listen, let's see who we got on today, Miss Gio. Let's see who, who's tagging already. I see Miss Jeanette, Miss Jeanette Tillman is watching. That's Pastor's mother. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We definitely, definitely celebrate you Amen. this Good morning. Miss Gladys Bussy. Good morning. She says good morning. We want to send good mornings and hearts to you guys. Please don't forget to send up those hearts. We want to see the energy, energy, energy yes. on the screen this yes. morning. And that's just that's just by you commenting and also sending those hearts to us. Amen this Amen. morning. So if you can, please don't forget to tag and don't forget to share this broadcast. Let's see what we got. I see we got Deacon Bobby Fletcher. He's watching with us this morning. Good morning. morning. Amen. Thank you guys for good joining morning, good us. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We have um, one of our youth leaders, Miss Amber Walker. Good morning, Miss Amber. How you doing this morning, Miss Amber? Amen. We got Reed Snack and Shack. They watching this morning. Miss Chantrice. She's saying good, good morning, morning family. family. Good, good morning, morning, good morning, good morning. Listen, we thank you guys. We definitely do thank you guys for tuning in this morning. We, we definitely have another do. youth leader, Miss Becky. Hey, how you doing, Miss Becky? Miss Becky, we, we want to send some hearts your way. We want to send some energy your way this morning. Listen, if you can, if you have not already, please go tag your family. Go tag your friends. They're going to they gonna miss out on the word this morning. We're talking yes. about the reset. Reset. Last week, it was so awesome. It, but it was Restart and reset. Listen, it was so awesome last week to where we even had to reset in the building before we even started. So we the Wi-Fi did. was kind of messing up on us last and week. And we still went out and with we a bang. And we still went out with a bang. The devil cannot stop us Amen. in 2021. Like, we're not going to let him stop us. So listen. We got your attention now. We got your attention. You done tag your family. You done tag your friends. Listen, we're about to go forth in intercessory prayer. We got Minister Tanji Prayer Simpson. warrior. She's a, she's a true prayer warrior. Anointed she's about lady. to go in this morning with us about with, in intercessory prayer. So we want you to tag at least five people right here. For in the, in, in, at least five people in the next 10 seconds. Please tag at least five people. If they're in need of a prayer, they need of something that they need to be drop done in their in, life, in drop the their comment. names in the comment because, listen, our true prayer warrior, Minister Tanji Simpson, is about to go forth. Amen. Amen. Listen, we'll be back with you guys soon. Hallelujah. 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 Heavenly Father, Lord, we praise you and we honor you, Father God. We come before you this morning, Father God. Oh, praising and worshiping you, Father God. Holy Spirit, have your way in the midst of us. 
Have your way in the midst of us, Holy Spirit. Lord, we come before you right now to lift up the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for Jesus, for he is our way. He is our way to you, Father God, and we thank you for Jesus. Jesus, we thank you for your love for mankind. We thank you for your love for us, Jesus. We call upon your name, Jesus. Jesus, Lord God, we thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, have your way. Holy Spirit, have your way. Holy Spirit, have your way. We worship you, Father God. We worship you, Father God, in the midst of all things that are going on, Father God. We worship you, Father God. We usher you into this place right now, Father God. We know that you are here. For the word says where two or three are gathered, you are here. And as the body of Christ individually, you are here with us, Father God. And we say thank you, Father God. And we ask you to come in right now, Father God. We usher you in your presence, Father God. And we send up a praise right now to you, Father God. Lord, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you, Father God. In the midst of everything, Father God, we thank you, Father God. We are in need, but we we say thank you, Father God, for we know that you will supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory through Christ Jesus. And we say thank you, Father God. Father, we praise you, Lord. Father God, that right now, Father God, that those that are in the need of healing right now, Father God, that your healing power is going out before them right now, Father God, that you are in the homes. You are in the hospitals. You are everywhere that healing is needed, Father God. And right now we send forth that healing power to touch those that are needed right now, Father God. Healing for their body. Healing for their mind. Healing for their soul, Father God. We thank you for your healing power, Lord. We call upon it right now to rest upon your people, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, Father God. We thank you, Father God. In the mighty name of Jesus and those that are needing financial blessings right now in the name of Jesus. We're calling those things down. We're calling finances down right now in the name of Jesus. That in the midst of this, you may not have a job, but God will supply your needs as you call upon him. As you seek him, he will supply everything that you need. Don't look at your bank account. Don't look in the cupboard at what you don't have. Don't look at all the bills that's on your table. Look to the God that he will supply. He will supply all your needs. He says, seek me and call upon me and see that I will do those things that you need. Father God, we thank you. There is so much chaos and trauma. There is so much chaos and there is so much going on in this earth right now. But we know that you are the God that sits high, but you are the God also that looks low. And you are the God that will walk among us, Father God. And we say thank you that even in the chaos, you are in control, Father God. Father God, right now I ask for your peace to rest upon us. And I ask for your order to come, Father God. Your order to come, Father God. That those things that you desire, your will, will come forth in the mighty name of Jesus. Send forth your peace. Send forth your peace on this earth, Father God. Send forth your peace into the heart of the people. Send forth your peace into the heart of people. The peace that surpasses understanding. The peace that Jesus left upon this earth. Send forth your peace to rest upon your people. That our eyes will turn to you, Father God. Our eyes will turn to you, Jesus. We need a touch from you, Jesus. We need to feel your presence. Your word says that you will never leave us nor forsake us. And those are, there are some that are weary right now. And they need a special touch from you, Father God. Touch them in the only way that you know how to touch them. To let them know that you are here. That you are with them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father God. Father God, we praise you. And we thank you, Father God. Father God, I just ask right now that you will send forth the spirit of the fear of the Lord to rest upon this earth the spirit of the fear of the Lord to rest upon your people that we will turn turn from our wicked ways and turn back to you father God that we will reverence you father God that we will stand in front of you father God clothed in the righteousness of God but we will clothed in the righteousness of Jesus but we will humble ourselves before you for you are worthy 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 thank you father god 
thank you father God have your way in the midst of this world have your way in the midst of the world Holy Spirit I ask right now that you just hover hover upon this earth hover upon your people hover upon those that do not know or have a relationship with the Father God hover upon them and remove the veil remove the blindness from our eyes that we may see into the midst of what the enemy is doing that we may see the work of God in the midst of this all remove the blindness in the mighty name of Jesus hallelujah God we love you we love you father God we love you we love you we love you we love you and let not that be words father God but touch our hearts father God that we begin to cry out to you father God we love you we love you we love you let it not be words but let it come forth in our action father God for your word says to love you is to obey you father God and let us seek now Lord to obey you and all that you lead and guide us to do father God hallelujah hallelujah Lord we praise you we praise you father God hallelujah Lord your peace your peace Lord we need your peace there are so many that right now are just wandering they are in the deserts they are in the wilderness they have strayed away from you because they are so confused and that is the plan of the enemy but right now in the name of Jesus I declare and decree that the plans of the enemy shall not continue to prevail in the body of Christ but God will send order into this earth in the mighty name of Jesus he will send clarity into the earth in the mighty name of Jesus he will strengthen the body of Christ right now in the mighty name of Jesus and he will raise up his ecclesia right now in the mighty name of Jesus hallelujah the enemy you all notice right now you are defeated you have been defeated you have no authority here in the body of Christ and we will stand upon the word of God that you are defeated and we are victorious in Christ hallelujah hallelujah no longer no longer no longer will you stray and send the, mind, the minds of the world of the minds of the believers biking forward biking forward biking forward no longer for we will stand upon the word of God we will walk in the authority of Christ we will claim all that is ours in the mighty name of Jesus hallelujah Lord we thank you we thank you Father God we thank you Father God Return to you, Father God, as your beloved bride. Return to you, Father God, as your beloved bride. Clean us up, oh Father God, without spot or blemish, that we stand before you holy and righteous. We stand before you clothed in the righteousness of Christ. And we begin to fear you, Father God. We begin to stand before you and reverence and fear knowing that you are the creator of all things and that you have us in the palm of your hand father god thank you father god glory 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 hallelujah healing 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 those that are needing healing i just ask right now that you will put your hand where you need that healing at in the mighty name of Jesus. And we're going to send forth that healing right now. We're going to send forth that healing power right now into the mighty, into your home, wherever you need it. Be it your heart, be it your knees, your joints. In the mighty name of Jesus, we send forth your healing, Father God. Let your healing rest upon them, Father God. If they need healing in their mind, Father God, for there is so much confusion. There is so much doubt and unbelief. Fill them with your healing power to right now to restore their understanding of you, Father God. Let us trust and stand upon you, O oh Father God, that you know all of our needs, Father God. And your word says that as we cast our cares upon you, that you care for us, Father God. And we cast every one of our cares, financially, emotional, spiritual, mentally 
We cast them before you, Father God. We cast all those cares, Father God. Hallelujah, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father God. Bring us back into the house, Father God. Bring us back into the house, Father God. Bring us back into corporate worship. For there is power in numbers. There is power in numbers. And bring us back to the house of God, Father God. Bring us back ready to, to lift you up, Lord. To honor you, Father God. To worship you, Father God. To encourage and to exhort, but more importantly, to empower and equip all the saints to walk in the authority of Christ that he has given us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Lord, we worship you. We worship you for you are worthy. You are worthy, Father God. And Father God, we just lift up all these prayers and all these praise that we have offered up to you right now, Father God. And we say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for answering every one of our prayers. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. amen. Woo, that was a good prayer, Listen, that was it? good. Miss Joe, awesome. as she began to just pray, the scripture she came to me, Second Chronicles and 7 and 14, it says, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive, their, forgive them of their sins and will heal their land. Listen, when she began to pray, I just kept on hearing the word of peace, peace, peace 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 and she did an awesome job of awesome, praying this awesome morning job. listen if you can if you feeling down this week go back and watch that prayer again because she went in this morning she talked about families and also finances so listen if you can please 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 go back and watch that but listen at this time listen we got we're gonna go further in our service at this time listen we're gonna do our we got a, a new a thing that we're doing this year um with our top fans can we talk a little bit about that this morning yes we just want to show our gratitude um to those that have been very very supportive with us, um, commenting, sharing the live, um, sh I mean, um, giving us hearts, Amen. just being with us along the way. Um, a few a few that we want to shout out is Miss LaKayla Walker, Miss Melissa Williams. They always sharing, Miss Gio. They always sharing. They, they, they sending up the energy and sending up those hearts. They, who, they've who been top got? fans for a few months now. Who else we got on there this morning? Who else we got on the list this morning? Let's see. We got Mr. Lamar Graves and Mr. Buddy Boy Brockington. Thank you guys thank for you, being you, with us. You. Miriam Harrison, Miss Tiffany Bussey, and Sensel Bussey, and Lawana Strozier. And last but not least, Brian and Anquanet Smith. Listen, we thank you guys. We thank you guys. We dearly, dearly, dearly do thank you guys because guess what? You guys have been helping us and also along with some others have been helping us push the gospel each week. Listen, we're now going into Texas and Arizona and different places like that by just by your help, by pushing of a button. That's but listen, right. we need your help financially as well. Listen, at this time, we're going to take this time for tithes and offering. Listen, the information will be on your screen, but I'm going to kind of talk to you guys a little bit through how to give this morning amen you can give by cash up that's dollar sign ecim that's dollar sign ecim via cash up that's dollar sign ecim so text your amount to dollar sign ecim also you can text ecim 08 to 188364 give that's 188364 give text ecim 08 to 188364 give or you can text ecim 08 to this number 188364 4483 that's 188364 4483 or visit us on our website www.ecimfamily.org or if you can please go download our church app the empowerment center yes. church app you are missing yes. out if it's you haven't already definitely need to do that you definitely need to do that so please it's a tab on there for giving but listen at this time i'm, I'm going to pray over your finances at this time and then we're going to call up our great pastor pastor frank bussy but if we can let's 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 pray it man father we thank you now for all you have done god we ask that you just open up the windows of heaven god for us this morning god touch the ones that had the ability to give this morning god bless them in a mighty way god we ask that you just send a multiplication spirit their way 
God. Touch their finances so that it may multiply, God. We thank you now, God. But also we ask you just to send a blessing to the ones that didn't have the ability to give, God. Touch them so they have the ability to give next time. Father, we thank you now, God. God, we ask you to just continue to bless us, God, in a mighty way, God. Bless our finances. Bless our homes, God, in the mighty name of Jesus, God. We know that, that we have seed in the ground. So, God, we're waiting on our harvest, God, right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We give your name all the glory, and we give your name all the honor for what you're about to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Listen, at this time, we're about to call forth our pastor, Pastor Frank C. Bussy. If you send can, heart, send so. up those hearts, send those hearts, send those hearts. Amen. Come on, right where you are, right where you are, come on. Right where you are in your home, come on, right where you are, right where you are, riding in your automobiles, in your home, amen, whatever device you're using, come on, right where you are, right where you are, come on, come on, come on, we get, we made it to the second Sunday, come on, right where you are, right where you are, right where you are, let's begin to release some worship, let's begin to release some praise, come on, if God's been good to you, can you just send some hearts up, can you just send some hearts up, that's your way of saying, you sick, you're signifying to the heavens that you're in agreement that God's been good to you. You're signifying God's been good to you. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, what a, what a wonderful day. Despite everything that's going on, what a wonderful day. This is still the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Come on, how many people believe that? This is still the day that the Lord has made. And despite what I've been going through, I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. I'm going to find a way to be happy about it. I'm going to find a way to celebrate it. It may be a day that if, if I look around, if I, I can find a lot of things to make that, that, that make my mouth sour like a lemon. But I'm telling you, I'm going to find a way to make lemonade. I'm going to make something sweet out of this day today. I refuse to give the enemy. Anybody who refuse to give the enemy any kind of glory we're not going to talk about how rainy it is we're going to talk about how good god is come on he's still been good yeah i know but he's still been good yes i heard it but he's still been good yeah i felt it but he's still been good he's still been good any he? he's still been good people watching right now can you put he's still been good in the comment he's still been good it was rough, but he's still been good. Unusual battle, but he's still been good. Unfavorable situations that I faced, but he's still been good. Hadn't always had the money that I needed, but he's been good. I would love to be in a different place, a different location, a different house, but he's still been good. Come on, somebody. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Any, he's still been good. Still been good. The enemy don't like when we say a still been good. When we give God a still been good kind of praise, the enemy want us to curse God and die, but we know better. We know better. He's still been good. Still been good. He's still been good. He's still been good. I may not be where I want to be, but he's still been good. I made it, I made it, I made it, I made it. He's still been good. I remember when my grandmother used to put some meals together. Sometimes it wasn't nothing, wasn't much. She would grab a chicken and cut it up a hundred ways and a little bit of grits. So we have chicken and grits, but you know, it filled our belly up. It was still good. It was something good. Sometimes we may not have everything we're looking for, everything we want, everything we're dreaming about. But we can all testify God been good. He's still good. Come on, we getting ready to go into the word. I want you one more time. Can you flood the screen with hearts? Signifying God has been good. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. God has been good. Amen. We greet you in the name of the Lord.
Amen for all of you and where you're watching and where you're watching from. We thank God for you. If you would take just a moment, let us know what city or state you're watching from. Amen. We always love to go back and, and pray over your city, your state. Amen. So if you would just simply put your city, your state where you're watching from. We've been seeing God reach in areas amen that we are so excited to be in places that we wouldn't be amen we can all talk about the pandemic but the pandemic has forced us into places we never thought we'd go we thank god for all of the different countries that we are we are impacting right now through social media we thank god that for the last sun, few sundays we've been winning souls to christ amen come on somebody that's that's something to shout about we're still winning souls to christ we thank God for Ghana and Botswana. We thank God for Mexico and Germany and so many other countries that are watching around the world. So many different states like Arizona, Arkansas, California, the Carolinas, Detroit, Texas, and so many places that are watching around the country and around the world. We thank God for the opportunity. But there's a word for you. But before I get into the word, can you help me celebrate one of my closest, dearest brothers that slipped in on me all the way from Atlanta, Georgia, is in the house. He's my prayer partner. Amen. He's the prophet. Amen. He's the one that we, when, when we were young, we would go from house to house prophesying. We would take, it didn't matter where we were, amen, or whenever God called, we would work all day long. And when we got off work, we would get together, go to his house, and we would pray for a little while. And then we would stop by and see our mentor, prophet is Mary Coney, who's going on to be with the Lord. And then we would go chase some demons. Amen. Yes, we would. Yes, we would. They called us them young demon slayers. We would go. We was we were radical. But I'll tell you one thing. I recall one we ran into. <laughs> we had to work for a little while, but we weren't scared of nothing. But my dear brother, brother Stanford Johnson, I call him the prophet. Amen. Prophet Johnson is in the house. I call it like God said. I call it the way God said. I've seen his gift, amen. His gift has been phenomenal. I re remember and recall times when we were we went to one particular place and we was getting ready to pray for this family because that's what we would do. We would always just go find somebody that wanted prayer, amen. We would go to the hospital. We would walk into the into the uh, ICU waiting room because we know those people needed somebody. And we would go in and we would say, hey, hey would you like prayer? I recall one woman say, no, I don't want any prayer. Okay, would you like any prayer? Yeah, I'll take some prayer. How about you? You want some prayer? Yeah, I'll take some prayer. We were studying the nose. We would pray for people. Amen. We would pray for them. But I remember one time that we walked into the building, into this house, this home to pray for somebody, he and I, and we began to pray for them. And right before uh, we closed out in prayer, he said, he began to prophesy, and he was so absolutely accurate. I've seen him be so accurate over time. Amen. Uh, one time he actually stopped me. I was getting ready to close out, and he said, wait a minute. The Lord has showed him something. He looked at the man. He said, man, I see wires running in and out of your body. The man lifts up his shirt and says, seeing is believing he had wires going into his stomach area, heart area, something from the outside to the inside. I've seen so many of those things happen, and we would just sometimes take turns prophesying. And it was amazing. And so he's in the house slipped in on me amen but i'm so celebrating one more time can you put your hands together amen for my brother continue to pray for him amen pray for my brother amen because we are definitely coming to see you in a city sometime when everything passes over i'm believing god that he's going to allow he and i to partner back up again and come see you in your city amen but hey but i, I remember one time uh you remember when we stopped the we stopped the um the, the ambulance were getting ready to load up one of our classmates that had OD, you know, had, had OD'd on drugs. And he and I had went into the, into the hospital and we asked her mom for permission to be able to pray for her. And she said, yeah, they was getting ready to put her in a helicopter to fly her out because she was in a pretty bad state. So they was kind of upset with her, but we grabbed and we rolled her back into her room. We prayed over her. We, not, we anointed her and put handkerchiefs on her arm because we were young and radical. And we released her and let her go. She came back a couple weeks later better than she were when she, she was born. Everything was working like they said. It wouldn't work. It was working. Amen. God gave her a divine miracle, but that's how radical we were. We would stop them from, we would stop the helicopter copter and pray for somebody amen so we just thank god for those memories and we believe god is going to give us back those times and we're coming to a city near you at some point amen but right now can you go with me to proverbs chapter 4 
verse number 20. I want to pick up around verse 23, but I want to start at verse number 20. Father, we thank you, Lord, for what you're doing and how you're shifting things in the earth. We thank you that you're getting ready to rise up and raise, rise, raise up fresh voices, new voices. We thank you that you're getting ready to, to mend bridges and you're tearing mountains down. We thank you that you're toppling over the form of things that have become stagnated and stale and you're bringing something fresh. Thank you for fresh bread that's getting ready to hit our season. Hit, get ready to hit our life in this new season. Thank you for new connections, new relationships that's going to prove to be profitable for the kingdom of God. Thank you for a wave of energy that's going to radically shift the paradigm, change the culture, and cause men and women to run back to the house of the Lord, excited and ready. Thank you for the prophets and prophetess that you're raising up in this hour, for the gifts that's being stirred. Where the enemy is creating a lot of smoke, you are the true fire. Thank you for your fire. We bless you and we honor you. We magnify your name this morning. And we exalt you to the highest of the heavens. In Jesus' name, amen, 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 amen. We've been talking about reset. Because coming into 2020 after coming from 20, coming into 2021 after coming from 2020, you have to have a reset. And so despite everything that, that I had planned and what I wanted to do, the Spirit of the Lord so wisely stops me and reminds me that there is a need for reset. Because anytime you're going through any kind of ordeal or you're going through any kind of uh, rough life or rough terrain and you come to an area where you hit some bumps or some potholes in the road for a while, it kind of throws things out of alignment and you have to reset. At least you wear out your tires or you wear yourself out on a journey trying to accomplish something and it creates a rough ride. But every time you get ready to go into a new season, you need to reset yourself because you have to change. You have to go back and make sure that you change your focus back to where it started before you had the rough patch. Kind of like, and I'll say it again, it's kind of like when someone is married and you have to kind of, if you go through a rough marriage and it ends up in a divorce and you go into another marriage but you never reset your way of thinking, you'll bring that old marriage, that old mindset, that old vision into a new marriage and you'll literally destroy it because you'll start to see the new marriage in a way that you saw the old marriage thinking that every man is the same. And so you have to reset. And so today we want to talk about reset the temperature of your heart because it's so important that we reset the temperature of our heart. We talked about last week about the reset of your vision so that you refocus back onto your ability to be able to see things the way God sees things. And so now we want to talk about reset the temperature of your heart. And talking about temperature, temperature works by balance. Temperature works by balance. So I want to talk to you today about setting the temperature of your heart. And so that we come back into a place to where our heart is in alignment and it's beating in the rhythm that God would have us to beat in. It's beating in God-like kind of rhythm. In fact, it's in sync with God. So often when we go through seasons of our life, it's so easy for us to come to a place to where our heart gets out of rhythm. There's a thing where they, in the hospital, I, don't, I can't tell you the name of it, but they'll shock your heart back into rhythm. And so I want to shock your heart back into rhythm today because in, when you've had some things that happen in life, it can throw things out of rhythm. It throws your heart out of rhythm. And, and uh, we're getting ready to read the scripture, and the Bible says that every Everything flows from the heart. So it's vital that you reset the heart because your heart feeds everything. Amen. Here's the word. It says, my son. Now, when you see the word son, and anytime God is talking about son, God never focuses everything simply on gender. It, it is when God does it, it's more, spirit, it's more spiritual than anything. So you can very easily put your own name in there. My daughter, my son, my daughter, Frank, my daughter, you know, my, my daughter, excuse me, my daughter, Jill and my son Frank or whatever, whatever your name is you can place it right in that place right there but my son give attention to my words incline your ear to my saying do not let them depart from your eyes keep them in the midst of your heart for they are life to those who find them 
and health to all their flesh. Keep your heart from all diligence, for out of it springs the issues of life. Put away from you a deceitful mouth and put perverse lips far from you. Let your eyes look straight ahead and your eyelids look right before you. Ponder the path of your feet and let all of your ways be established. Do not turn to the right or to the left. Remove your feet, your foot from evil. Take me back to verse number 23. If you, if you could give me, give me the message Bible. Keep vigilant watch over your heart. It means to guard it. It means to, to take your heart, he says, to guard it, to set up some kind of a watch tower where you can watch over your heart so that, you, you, that, so that nothing enters into your heart and damage your heart. It says watch it vigilantly. Keep watch over it because it's important because everything in life starts with, you know, life starts right at the heart and the heart feeds everything. He says, keep vigilant and watch over your heart. That's where life starts. Life begins with the heart. Everything is set in motion by the heart. The heart is vital. The heart is like the engine of everything. The heart is the engine of your body. And it is amazing when I begin to prepare myself for this message and I begin to look at the heart. And I, I was just doing a little bit of research and I found out that the heart has a right side and a left side. And it literally works different. And it's so important that the heart functions the way it's supposed to. So when the writer tells us, and they're using the analogy of the heart, it's literally extremely important that you watch over your heart. And so I come to tell somebody that I, I need to shock your heart back into the right rhythm, in the rhythm and the flow of God, because your heart has a vital part to your life. Everything flows from your heart. And in a natural heart, watch this, in a natural heart, on the right side, the right side of your heart, it receives blood that has poor oxygen. And so what it does is it receives blood that has poor oxygen, and then it sends it, I believe, to the lungs or the liver. Lungs. I thought my wife would say something since she was a nurse, but she's quiet. Thank God somebody, the camera personnel said something. It sends it to the lungs so that, the, so that it can filter and snatch the carbon monoxide out. And then it sends fresh blood to the left side of your heart so that it can then feed through the vein all of your organs. The heart is important. So the writer says you have to watch vigilantly over your heart. Because there's something about your heart, it feeds life. It's life. That's where life starts in the heart. And when you go through some things in, in life, it affects your heart. And if it affects your heart, it affects everything. If it affects your heart, it affects how you respond to people. Find someone who's been heartbroken. And they've been heartbroken enough, they come to the place where they don't trust anybody. Or they kind of get the mindset, well, the last one did it to me, so I'm going to do it to me. That's why people have booze and, 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 and chicks and bays and side, chicks on the side because they feel like, well, I've been cheated on, so I'll, you know, I'm going to make sure that this time around I'm going I'm to be ahead of the game. Because when people's hearts are broken, they tend to respond to life different. When people go through different situations in life, they tend to address issues in a different way. And the Bible says that guard your heart for this is where life starts. Children who, who were reared and they didn't get the love at home, they tend to respond to life different. Children who, who tend to feel as if they've been rejected. They tend to respond to life different. They find love in gangs. 
in other groups because they feel like there's no love at home. And so their heart is searching for love and it searches for the wrong place in all the wrong places. There are times when women find love in all the wrong places. Men find love in all the wrong places, all the wrong things because of the simple fact that their heart is out of rhythm. Life and the heart feeds everything the heart feeds everything. Everything starts at the heart. And it's something about when you go through a, a season like we did in 2020. And things are not pretty. Like they were for some people in 2020. And it starts to affect how you respond. To life. It affects how you treat people. It affects how you treat children. You want to find somebody who's frustrated, their house, their house in order. You want to find a married couple who's, who's at odds at each other and they're at each other's throat because they can't see the value of each other. And you want to see how they don't care who's in the room. They don't care how many children around. They don't care what they, they don't care, you know, what they present to the children. They'll be all out war right in front of everybody, training the next generation because they're broken. And sometimes when you're broken, you respond with anger. And the first thing you want to do is lash out and fight. Broken people fight a lot. Broken people are wounded people. It's nothing like having a sore heart. People with sore hearts, if you touch it the right way, they, be, they respond with anger. They respond with bitterness. Because the heart is hurting. And it never was healed. And so God is like, why are you going into 2021 with a broken heart or hurt heart? Are you going into 2021 and things are not the way you had planned or expected them to turn out? And you're trying to go into a new season with the old mindset and the old heart. And so my responsibility is, is to jar your heart to the place to where it gets back into the rhythm. And the flow of things. Now watch this. Here, here's something that I was looking at. I want to share something with you that's very important. Now watch this. Let me find my spot. There we go. 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 I was like, okay then, Lord, if we got to do this thing on temperature, you know, with our heart, because your heart, it flows and it has this temperature when you bring balance, because that's my whole thing. I come to talk to you about about setting the atmosphere or the temperature of your heart because your heart sets the atmosphere in your room. In other words, like when you feel love, you bring love in the room, right? You set the atmosphere for the room. When you feel appreciated and value and you're loving and celebrating life, when you walk into the room, it, it's in the atmosphere. And so it's like, how do we take our heart like a thermostat and set the temperature in a way that we bring that love into the room? And one thing about setting a thermostat, a thermostat works by balance. Meaning that, watch it, here's balance. Used to produce a state of rest or balance due to equal action of opposing forces. Meaning that, watch this, when we talk about in the kingdom of God, Romans 8 and 28, because, you know, balance is opposing forces, but it's creating a balance. What it means is that Romans 8 and 28 says, all things work together for the good of them that love God, and according to the, them who are called by God, according to the purpose, right? Watch this, I'm paraphrasing, but, but here's what he's saying is that there are some bad things that are happening. But you balance it out with good things. God allows some bad things to happen, but then there are some good things. In other words, God has two wheels. One a permissive wheel and one is a perfect wheel. And in his permissive wheel, God will allow some things to happen in his permissive wheel that doesn't affect his perfect wheel. But if you're not careful, you'll be so offended by the thing that happened in God's permissive wheel that it causes your heart to look toward God different and the bible says all things work together for the good and you have to learn how to balance the good days and the bad days so that it doesn't get your heart out of rhythm and out of balance you have to learn that some days are not going to always be good days 
Some seasons will not always be good seasons, but even though there's no, there's some seasons in your life that things doesn't quite go the way that you planned, you balance it because good days, bad days equal positives and negatives. Up and down, in and out. It's like the heartbeat. Doom, 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 doom. Do, do. It's in ba it's, it's, it's balance. It's in rhythm. I when I remember when I was younger and I had this this thing that they found out when they got ready to put me in the hospital to have my tonsils taken out. They found out that it was something wrong with my heart. It was out of rhythm, and it was beating much faster, and it was beating out of rhythm than what it should be. And so when they got ready to put me in the, in surgery and they found out that they had to bring me out of it because my heart was not able to withstand the surgery. And so when they took me to Augusta, I remember as a little boy, they took me to Augusta, Georgia, and I remember the doctor telling uh, my father, he was asking him, he says, well, uh, how far do you live from the hospital? And he'll never be able to really play like all the other young people, so you have to make sure that you watch over him and keep him. And we rode home that day, and at that, that day when we got to my grandmother's house, 706 Martin Luther King drive we were standing on the porch the kids was out there playing my father looked at me when he dropped me off at my grandmother's house he said go play because he heard the doctor's report he understood what they said but he also knew that there was somebody who could regulate the heart and so with a simple prayer he sent me back into playing with everybody else and i've been playing ever since in fact, I never even had to have my tonsils removed. But he learned how, but, but I had to learn how to balance good days, bad days. We have to learn how to balance good days and bad days. But here's the thing about setting the balance of the temperature so that we can have the atmosphere conducing to what is like what God wants to be able to take up habitation. Right, watch this. Watch this, you know what? Here's what I found out. That when we look at our heart and how God sees and how the writer says, guard the heart. Here's, here, here's what I found out. That was so strange. That I'm like, well, Lord, how can I deliver this in a way that is understandable? And he says, well, search it. And so I begin to search and I say, well, let me see. How does the son respond to the earth or the earth responds to the sun because he was trying to show me that how the sun and the earth respond is how we respond to the S-O-N the same way the earth responds to the S-U-N and so I saw something in it that in the S-U-N and how it responds to the earth the sun has one the earth has one or two choices it can either absorb the S-U-N or it can reject the S-U-N it calls it reflect Rather than absorb, it says you can, uh, you can either absorb the sun or it can reflect the sun. And so what happens is when the earth reabsorbs the sun, something amazing happens. When it absorbs the sun, the water we see that after rain, that it disappears, it creates what it called, you know, a, 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 a greenhouse, the gases effect, where the, the water that we think disappears actually relocates. Some goes into the earth, some is stored into the clouds. And so I'm looking at it like, Lord, how does this make any sense? He says when the earth responds to the S-U-N, it is in operation of the laws in which I created everything, that it receives the S-U-N and so that it can be warmed. But it must release. And so when the earth because when the earth receives the S-U-N, believe it or not, it, it releases heat. When it releases heat, it releases everything that the trees need. It releases carbon monoxide. It releases different things in the plants so that the animals can eat the grass and the, grass, the animals can get what it needs. We eat the animals and we can get what we need. And so, watch this now. But it says that when the, when the earth reflects the sun, 
then it changes the atmosphere in a negative way because it's no longer receiving if it stays in that position long enough it will cause everything around it to begin to die because it's not getting what it needs watch this though it's like this we put these things in our cars let me get a little hope let me get a little hope somebody give me a little hope real quick I need one more person to give me just a little more hope. Let me show you something real quick. Come on, sir. You already married. What you trying to be so cool for? Hurry up, sir. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Right? Watch this now. This is when we, we, we this belongs to my wife. She puts this in the front of her car, right? To stop the sunlight from coming in. The SU in. She stop it from coming in. And in her mind, she thinks it makes the car cooler. But it doesn't make the car cooler because you can put this in there all you want to. It just keeps the direct sunlight out, but it doesn't make the car cooler. Somebody probably saying, ain't no way you're wrong. You missed it, Pastor. Wait a minute. You're reflecting the sun. It doesn't make the car cooler. It simply reflects the sun. Now, your seat may not be as hot because it doesn't have the direct sunlight. But if you leave them windows up, you can sit in that car all you want to with this up here. But the pressure keep rising from the heat on the outside. This doesn't stop the pressure of the heat from the inside from rising because heat rises. So as long as the whole car is in the heat and there's no exit, it doesn't stop nothing but direct sunlight. But the car on the inside itself, it continues to have heat. The only way that it stops, that the heat changes, is that they have what is called an air condition. And the air conditioner's job is to pull the hot air out of the car. So that cool air can come into the car. This only stops this direct sunlight. But here's what I come to tell you that here's what has happened with people who's been hurt. And 2020 has caught us how to some people have put this up because they've been hurt and they've been trying to stop the S-O-N. So the S-O-N can't get in to their heart because of the reflection. They are reflecting it. What, it is, what they're saying is that they're sending whatever God is trying to give them. They're sending it back to him because what they're saying is, I reject it. So when my wife puts this in her car, she's saying, I reject the sunlight. And when you and I start to have a lifestyle where we no longer want to hear the word of the Lord, then we reject the, the S-O-N. Right? We're rejecting him. We're saying, I don't want you inside. And so how do how do I know or uh, how can I describe people who are has a sun visor to keep God from being in their heart? I can identify them because what God has done in 2020. Watch this now. In 2020, did something happen? We used to have church where we come to the building and when we come to the building it was hard to determine who had a reflector because everybody looked the same because as long as they were getting somewhere close around the perimeter it was hard to really see it wasn't until we had to go through a season where you couldn't come to church every week. See, a, a reflector is a Sunday goer. Someone who's a reflector is a Sunday goer. Let me step in the front of you. They come to church on Sunday, but they don't really allow the word to get into their heart. They got a reflector to push it back worship can be going on and praise can be going on and they can be feeling it but as soon as the word 
the reflector come up because when God sends the light in, it's not to judge but to examine. And some folk don't like to be examined by God because when God goes in, he starts to look at everything that's broken so he can fix it. So a reflector for people who are broken that don't want to be fixed, they put a reflector up. They can come to church and they can serve on the usher board, but it doesn't change their heart because they got a reflector up. You got people who can preach the gospel, but they can't really get it all together because they got a reflector up because see when you come to God and you allow God to come in your heart you got to come to God naked and you got to let God just examine and you got to remove the reflectors let me show you how they were able to get away with it stay right there hold my microphone Give me some power. Yes, sir. Give me some power. 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 See, most people, 2021 has exposed that a lot of us been like a little, what they call this thing? A little heater. Something, but it's a, a space heater. A space heater. It's a space heater. Most of us been like a space heater. Let me turn it wide open. Whoo. I can feel that heat from right here. But here's the thing about a space heater. You see how red that thing is getting? Can you see how red that thing is? Can you see how red that is? You see it's turning red. And here's what happened to people who, who was hiding in 2020 with a relationship where they just wanted to be with God on Sunday, but they leave Sunday at the church and in a new atmosphere. I ain't trying to talk about you. I'm just, I'm just bringing the message the way God gave it to me, right? So watch this. Can you unplug it for me? It's unplugged. It's no longer red, but I still feel the heat. The thing about coming to church on Sunday, you'll get hot enough that The enemy can't hardly touch you because you're still warm. And by the time Sunday come around, plug me back up again. There you go. You got that thing. Oh, you back on fire again. Sunday goes. You back on fire again. You back on fire again. You lit. But here comes Monday. Bam. Out of fire. But you still hot. You still hot now. You still hot. You still hot. Plug me back up again. Boom, y'all. I feel that heat. And the devil feel your heat because you coming in under the same, under this uh, uh, atmosphere and you get full of power. You get full of light. You get full of God's glory. You get full of God's praise. Full of God's worship. But then all of a sudden, because it's Sunday, you're on fire. But Monday, you unplug. You just unplug. You just unplug. Baby, you don't have to cut your heat off. This thing has a built-in thermostat. It's designed. If you got a built-in thermostat, it's designed that when you need to back off, it'll back off. And when you need to go forward, it'll go forward. Built-in thermostat. You got to blow it up. Blow it up. One more time. Here we go. I feel the heat because it's Sunday. But take me to my... Take me to my Monday mode. I'm out of fire. But I'm still warm from the service. I'm still warm from the, from the prayer. But what happened when you go through all of 2020 and they not only unplug you, but God says, no more sudden relationships. You got to do this thing by yourself. Unplug you. He said, no more sudden relationships now. Now you gotta, we, we gotta do this thing ourselves. Now it's not about a sudden relationship anymore. Now is what have we been doing in, in the corners of our own private chambers? What have we been doing in privacy? How have we been loving in privacy? And God says, you've been in love on Sundays.
but we went through 2020 and it got us where we can't come to church on Sunday and so now that we can't come to church on Sundays we can't shift the atmosphere but that is not for everybody because guess what I found out when God says that the earth operates with the S-U-N the way we supposed to operate with the S-O-N when the earth is in a position when it's raining it cooperates and it receives the sun it allows the sun to bring in the heat and it releases heat so that it can rest and while it's resting it, re it brings in more heat it's a cycle but watch what happens when it becomes a dry season in a dry season the clouds give up the rain because the earth was in compliance with the SUN it gives up the rain I come to shock your heart back into rhythm because God says when you stop rejecting and reflecting the SON it says that while things are good give your praise when things are going well you should have been praising when things were going well you should have been praising because when you come into a dry season things start blessings still be coming down and blessings still be coming down and blessings still be flowing down because you're in co cooperation with the SON we've been out of church a long time and it's starting to tell on us it's starting to tell on us now it's starting to tell that the that some of our come on bring me back down I'm about out it's starting to tell on us it's starting to tell on us that I'm not talking about the world I'm talking about believers I'm not talking about the world. I'm not judging the world. I'm talking about believers. I'm talking about those that call ourselves ministers of the gospel and we don't even pray. We don't pray. We don't read our word. You're unplugging. And you got to reset your heart. Because you're coming to a place where it's comfortable now. To where you don't even read your word anymore and we want to, we want to win the world. We wait on God to come back and, get, and, and uh, start church back up again so we can get in church and get excited. But this is a season in 2020. It was, it was set aside, I believe, to see who really got it and who really don't. The world need us to stay plugged in because it's something about a space heater. It has a thermostat that it, it'll set the temperature at whatever you set it at. If you say 78 degrees, it keeps the room at 78 degrees. It'll turn red hot. And then if it drops down to, when it reaches 78, it'll back off. But if the temperature in the room starts to drop, it'll come back up again to set the temperature right again. You done seen stoves, glass top stoves, how, you know, you see the thing, it'll, uh, sometimes it'll light up really red. And you know it's working. But even if you don't see the red, the water boiling, because it's, it goes to red to set the temperature to where it needs. But the moment it gets to the temperature, it'll back off and rest. And if the temperature drop, it'll pick it back up again. That's what believers are supposed to be. If we're going into 2021 as believers, we got to get our heart back into rhythm. Our heart has to come back into rhythm. It can't be the praise and worship team that makes you 
Love God. You can't just love God on Sunday. The world needs to see your love on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and Saturday. They need to see you because they need answers and we're supposed to be in position to give the world answers. We're supposed to be in position to be able to give the world answers. But we're going through a crisis and do a, through a crisis, how are we as believers going to unplug our hearts from the word, unplug our hearts from prayer, unplug our hearts from worship, unplug our heart from adoration, unplug our heart from thanksgiving, unplug our heart from service. How can we unplug our hearts? My brother needs me. My sisters need me. That despite what's going on, I got to remain in a posture of prayer. I got to stay hot. Because I'm the one who sets the atmosphere. Whew. Remove the reflector. I want the whole light of God to shine in see every broken part of me examine my heart I never get a cousin of mine we used to go and he, he was born again and he was trying to do some things but he, he, had, he needed some deliverance and he would uh, I won't give his name because he can tell his own story he don't mind telling it but he would go and do some crazy stuff I'm talking about crazy stuff that we don't supposed to do. And then he said, hey, man, you want to go to church with me? I said, hey, man, that's a prophet we're going to go see. He said, I know. I said, hey, man, prophets can see. He said, I know. I said, they can see your confession that you just confessed to me. He said, I know. I want him to see it. Because I'm tired of living like I'm living. I need him to see it. Call it out if you got to call it out. He says, I ain't going to hide. He says, I'm going into the light so the light can shine and show every dark place I have. He said, because I want the atmosphere to be set in my life that I can walk right before God. Oh, that, that don't preach right. Huh? Huh? That don't preach right because, see, you can't be expecting to be a leader and you wait until everything get right before you do right this ain't even my kind of message I don't even know why the Lord done led me this way baby it can't be just a praise team it can't be your spot on the usher board it can't be because you serve on a deacon board that you show up on Sunday and you're on fire on Sunday. Baby, this thing has to be a lifestyle and you can't get it if you reflect the sun. You got to let the sun in. And then you got to be able to release it in the atmosphere. Facebook made him so much money during this shutdown because we see Christians becoming so self-centered now that it doesn't make any sense. Everything is about images and me. Me, 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 me. Look at me, look at me, look at me. But we were designed to be a city on the hill and we're supposed to reflect our light outward but we're telling everybody, look at me, 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 look at me. Look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. I'm looking at how broken you are. Because I can see it. God says we must correspond with the law. Are the principles in which he have ordained things to flow. The sun comes in. And when the sun comes in, we release adoration, praise. We admonish with thanksgiving. 
and our heart has been out of rhythm for a while because we have been outside of being able to come to church and because when we come to church we get a little fire how do I know in my closing because I see some of your Facebook posts now that you ain't been in church in a while your Facebook posts kind of shabby now now that we ain't been in church in a while your faithfulness and your commitment has kind of fallen off now that you ain't been in church in a while, you don't read anymore. You, you barely pray anymore. You, you hardly attend anything that deals with Christ. When, you hardly even mention his name anymore. When the last time you talked about his goodness since you've been out of church for a while? Heart out of rhythm. Heart out of rhythm. You may not sing on the praise team here, but what about the praise team that, that you know, on your line where you work at, on your job, where you, when the last time you come, walked into your office singing praises and worship unto the Lord? When the last time you talked about his goodness? Out of rhythm. I might get in trouble for this, but we're going to talk about the party. Isn't it amazing that the enemy tricked us and separated us from the fellowship of church on Sundays just to find out long enough and God allows it to find out just how much of God we say, you know, that we say we love, that we really do love, that now that we are in a place to where we no longer really come to church and assemble ourselves together, now we see what we really are. We don't pray like we used to pray. We barely mention his name. But David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. How many people can be honest and tell me my heart got out of rhythm? I lost my rhythm. 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 My thermostat is out of balance. And I need to be reset. I don't pray like I used to pray. Come on. Be honest. Own that thing. Own that thing right where you are. Own it. Own the first thing. The first rule of coming out of anything is to first accept it. I haven't been praying like I used to. I haven't been talking to God like I used to. I haven't been leading the way that I way that I supposed to. I'm being led by situations, circumstances, events. When I'm the thermostat, I set the temperature in the room. Whoever controls the atmosphere gets to control what is produced come on I want to let you go I'm going to let you go I need you to own that thing because we must plug back in we must plug back in God says you're going into 2021 you can't wait for church to get started and all of a sudden when the praise team is get going again or the usher board or wherever you serve in your local church and all of a sudden you're on fire again. Your fire should never go out. The earth never lets its heat get away from it. It releases enough imbalance as it rests and receives some. Come on, ma'am. Sir, I don't care where you are, where your position is. Be honest with yourself. Check your track record. And over the last few weeks, last few months, some things have been out of order because your heart is out of the rhythm. You've been 
you put up a reflector to where you're reflecting the word of the Lord rather than allowing it to come in. It has led you down the road, and I'm going to say this. It's not pretty, but it led you down the road to fornication. And this ain't even my kind of message, but it led you down the road to adultery. It led you down the road to alcohol. It led you down the road to trying drugs. It led you down the road to doing things that you never would do. But now you're doing it because your heart is out of rhythm. Today I call your heart back into rhythm. Come on. I call your heart back into rhythm. Ah, uh-uh, no, 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 no. You ain't gonna better sneak by. You gotta come through the door. You wanna sneak by. But you gotta come through the door. You can't sneak by the crowd. You gotta come through the I call you through the door. Come with me. I want to show you that there's a Savior that's waiting on you. And I don't care how long you've been in church. I don't care what position you serve in church. I need you to be upfront and honest. If you know your heart has been out of rhythm and you let yourself slip away and you're now become a person that you never thought you would become and you're ready to come back home, listen, I'm ready to bring you to the Savior that's ready to receive you. Are you ready? Repeat after me. Come on, everybody standing in the building, those that are here. You've been out of place. You're out of rhythm. And the sad thing about it is, there are going to be some people going to try to sneak by. You're going to try to sneak by. That's the sad thing about Christians. We try to be, we try to judge everybody else. But then we're just the biggest hypocrite we can be. We try to act like everything in our life is right. When you know good and well, you're out of rhythm. You know good and well, your heart hasn't been beating for God the way it should. You're out of rhythm. You've been more beating for the things of the world than the things of God. But the man of God and God loves you enough to send you a message and say, I want you to get back into rhythm. I want to restore you. Don't try to sneak by. Come through the door. Are you ready? Come through the door. I'm going to give you room in the, even in the building. I don't care if you're in the building. It's important. Come through the door. Are you ready? Repeat after me. Lord, today, like the prodigal son, I come to myself. I realize that I have not been cooperating with the, with the Lord the way I should. I put up a reflector and I hid behind the reflector. Today, I remove the reflector and I say, come in and examine my heart. Restore me and restore my heart back to order. Today, I reset my heart by accepting Christ as my Lord and Savior from this day forward. In Jesus' name, amen. If that's you, can you put hearts on the screens? If that's you in the building, can you wave at me? Can you put hearts on the screens? Amen. We see a couple people in the building that say, hey, look, uh, that was me. I'm back. My heart back into rhythm. Come on. Let me know on the screen. Can you put born again? Can you put rededicated? If today you found your rhythm, can you put born again, rededicated? Amen. Come on. While I'm waiting to see who it is, I want to take this opportunity to ask you to share the page, like it. If you know somebody who's been serving but slipping, tag their name. You don't have to tell them why. Just tag their name. While we're waiting, can you put 
We see someone in Arizona. Can you put three? Someone in Arizona just decided that they were getting their heart back into rhythm. We thank God. Someone in Arizona. No, I'm wrong. That's wrong. You. Two. Two. Excuse me, I, I didn't hear you. One born, two born again. One rededicated. So that's one born again, one rededicated. Two born again, one rededicated. Somebody. Two born again, two rededicated. Three rededicated. Y'all keep coming in, my folks, so I don't have to fire my wife. Come on, come on, somebody. My wife got me all messed up up here, but that's all right. Three born again, three rededicated. Hey, I got two in the building said they came back. Put me two more over there on that rededicated side. That's six. Six rededicated. Three born again. Come on. Come on. We got time. Six. Wait a minute. The number's changing. Ten rededicated. Ten rededicated. It said, my heart was out of rhythm, but I'm coming back. That's ten rededicated. My God, my God. Ten rededicated. Ten rededicated. Three born again. Anybody else? Come on. Surely there's some more. I like them numbers, but are there any more? I got time. While we're waiting, can you put the giving on the screen for me? Glory to God. Anybody else? While we're waiting to see if anybody else rededicated or born again, come on. Don't be shy. Come on home. Come through the door. We want to give an opportunity to give. There's several ways to give. On your screen, there are several ways to give. Despite how you're watching, whether you're watching from Roku, Apple Play, Amazon, Facebook, YouTube. There's several ways on the screen to give. Do, uh, dollar Cash App, dollar sign ECIM. That's all capital letters, dollar sign ECIM. Or you can text ECIM08 to this number. Text ECIM08 to this number, 888-364-GIVE. Text ECIM08 to 888-364-GIVE. Or you can visit us on our website at ecimfamily.org. Better yet, you know what you can do? Download our app and everything about giving, connecting, being a part of who we are, is on there. But if you are mailing it in, that also is there. It is two. Here's the, here's the mail-in address. It is 2465, P.O. Box 2465, Douglas, Georgia, 31535. 34. 31534. I ain't even gonna try to do that again. It's on there. Amen. It's on there. Amen. Don't forget to download our, our app and make sure that you, you create a login. Amen. We want to thank all of the cities that have been watching. That's Willie Coochie, Georgia, Crawfordville, Florida, Eastman, Georgia, Vidalia, Georgia. McDonough, Georgia, Albany, Georgia, Douglas, Arizona. Amen. We thank God and so many other places that have been watching. Thank God for you. Thank God for the 13 people that heard the message and responded properly. Again, don't forget to download the app. That's the Empowerment Center app. It was, on the, it was on the screen earlier. Create your login. Don't forget to follow us on YouTube. That's Frank Bussy on YouTube. Subscribe to our YouTube page. We're trying to grow our YouTube followers. Let me get my brother to come up real quickly so I can let y'all see who he is for some of, some of our family that's in different states. If you don't mind, if you don't mind, just come on. I just want y'all to see who he is. My brother who we ran them streets together for the Lord. It's my God. Amen. It's my God. Keep us lifted up. And like I said, we are definitely going to reunite and we're coming to see you at some point when everything clears up. Amen. You, you, you with me? Amen. Osilla. Thank God for Osilla. God bless you. Fitzgerald, Georgia. 
Tifton, Georgia. Hey, Howard, Georgia. Amen. Our hearts are back into rhythm with God. We're back in the flow of God. Father, we thank you today for those that have heard your word and decided to reconnect. Where you they've allowed you to put their heart back into rhythm. We've owned ours. We've said publicly that we've allowed ourselves to get out of order. But today we're back in order. And our hearts are back into rhythm. And we're gracious for, for your sovereignty and your generosity for extending to us time. Thank you so much. And Father, we thank God also for we see the state of Texas is on. Father, we do thank you for our government right now, Lord. We pray for our government and Lord that, that you're bringing order. We know that it is not a strange thing to you, neither is it a surprise to you, but you're already working. In fact, you've already positioned yourself to go to the go to the hills yourself and to administer a thank you for the lives that you're bringing to Capitol Hill and how you're going to be able, Lord, to turn America around. But thank you also, Lord, for the shaking, because if it had not been for the shaking and how you shook America, then you would not have gotten our attention the way you did. Thank you for getting our attention. And we know it was not to destroy us, but it is to make us better. We thank God for Douglas G. A. A. Man in the house. Amen. God bless you. Don't forget to share. Don't forget to share, 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 and listen how you're going to keep your heart into rhythm with God. You're going to have to get into your word, get you some morning devotionals. Amen. Get you. Make sure you're getting into your prayer. Amen. You can't keep running as believers because the world need to see us. The world need to see us being who we say we are. God bless you.